Welcome to Enmity Podcasting, Episode 5. That's right, five weeks old, but we got the maturity of a two-week-old. Here's today's your panel. First off, he's got a big head, but an even bigger wallet. It's Big Rickoff. Next to him is Ignitia. He's the madman himself. And your host, I'm Raging Rondo. Today... We've got a lot of things to talk about. It's PvP night! That's right, it's PvP. First off, though, we're going to talk about Reddit news. Followed by Season 1, Getting Held Back. We didn't see that coming. Then we're going to talk about our week in Star Wars The Old Republic. Followed by World PvP vs. Organized PvP. Which one's better? Where does the heart of the PvP lie? That's up to you. Big, what's new on Reddit this week? Oh, like always, there was uh, going to get info on Reddit, screenshots like always, but the uh, the most controversial topic I'd have to say was the raid markers being in the uh, the cartel packs. For anyone that doesn't know about it, what the, uh, the raid markers are allow, they allowed you to place a marker on the ground uh, with almost no range, so that way you can help set up the fights, which is, you know, would be a great addition to Star Wars if they were not... Uh, rare items in the new cartel packs and also single-use items so you have a really expensive items possibly costing you from three to five dollars that you get to use once and uh, so there's again a lot of controversy there on uh there on reddit i don't know what do you guys think about that do you guys think they're okay the way it is or how would you guys like to see them implemented i think it's a horrible way they implemented raid markings Especially since I believe it should be part of any uh, raid leader's interface to be able to use those, especially when it comes to actually setting up raids with pugs and etc. It's a very, very useful tool. I mean, it's not a toy. It's not a special like, oh, look, I can make a color. It's it. This is specifically to help us actually set something up. I mean, the cartel market with all its toys and gifts and you know, uh, little fancy objects like the life day tree and stuff like that is what we've been having to use as raid markers and it has such a limited range that you can't even really do them without pulling a boss it's been very very com- convoluted in a sense when it comes to actually trying to do something and the fact that it is a super rare and we have to spend actual money on it just to be able to make our lives easier when it comes to actual raiding it's it's pathetic. Well, yeah, yeah, and I think like another thing that uh, that's been brought up is we've got these glowing red eyes and glowing yellow eyes that they light up and they stay with you and you can use them multiple times. You've got hut balls you can throw at people's heads. You can uh, shower people with uh, uh, what are those uh, glittery things, right? But. But the one thing that we've been asking for, the one thing that will make us life easier, maybe not even in raiding, but also in PvP, they make it a one-time use? Yeah, I'm going to have to give Bioware the benefit of the doubt. I just think it was someone in marketing. You know, I think they developed this great tool, and then they gave it to the cartel market people, and then, you know, probably someone thought, hey, you know this would be a good implementation to make them one type use but you know maybe they accidentally flagged them as rare items maybe they were supposed to be somewhat common but yeah i mean even if not making them free you know or possibly from a vendor if they're reusable i think that's a start but i would definitely like to see them implemented that you know anyone can buy them off the cartel market and just maybe make the cartel market ones you know like always make them uh you know somehow more cosmetic where you can put a target marker of uh you know Jawa jumping around opposed to the ones you get from the vendor maybe with just being the basic you know is there more than one version of it marker. like is there a there's, green there's or a red colors. oh okay so there's three different colors yeah I forget what colors they are but there are three different ones of them so like I said I would like to see those pushed to the standard vendors and I think that was some of the suggestions on, on reddit and, and then my idea would be uh, like I said adding maybe more of the uh, the vanity type ones through the, through the cartel market or maybe make the cartel market ones reusable and then make the ones you have to buy off the vendor something cheap like a uh, hundred credits and you know that way it would be beneficial from the cartel market so you won't have to remember to pick one up every time but I mean 
I would have to oh, actually dis disagree with you on that one. Uh, I personally believe it should be part of the interface, not being sold or bought or anything or used as a credit sync whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I could agree with that a little bit, but uh, come on. I mean, we're, we're kind of funding the game right now because they don't have enough people as some other MMOs. So this is kind of the way we're funding it. So, I mean, if, if I have to spend, no, you know what? I don't want to spend that money either. I just talk myself out of it. <laughs> you ever done that to yourself? <laughs> like, uh, you're right. I think it should be on, in the UI. I'm just thinking about other games that have, have used this sort of um, system. And it's it's definitely something that should be in an, an arrayed frame for the, the ops leader. But I do, I mean, let's talk about this really quick too. I mean, you said that there's other tools that they have out there, Ignitium. That like oh I don't we shouldn't have to use this right or, or something to that effect, but I I think that like some of them are nice. You, you could throw a, a Jabba the Hut looking statue out, and um, it looks like the boss, and you can say okay this is how we want to be situated around the boss. So I do like the fact that they're using stuff like that too. But these markings will definitely make it easier for a raid leader who's worth his weight in salt, as they like to say in the old good old old times. Uh, <laughs> to make life a little bit easier. Did I just age myself right now? Or like, let's just keep talking. <laughs> yes, you did. You did. But uh, at the same time, I, the thing is, is having a marker like that with unlimited range and actually being able to set something up is essential to actually helping out, especially in a pug raid. And it works really, really good with the progression raiders. We can, you can set markers up figure out where you want to uh, set your groups and where you're going to position the boss, etc. And it works really, really well. The fact is, is with the toys and the cosmetic and vanity items from the cartel pack, it just does not give us the range to actually be able to do the right thing. I I mean, you have a... Oh, you mean how far you can throw it out? Boss. Exactly. I have uh, very big issues having to spend money on trying to actually use a marker instead of a cosmetic item. Cosmetic or vanity. Yeah, and some of those markers, I think, only have a range between 10 and 30 meters, which, you know, in setting those up or, you know, putting a marker above your own head and trying to stand by a certain area, you know, just allows some plenty of times for the boss to be pulled and, and wiping the raids and just causing extra time. So, yeah, I would definitely like to see these, uh, like I said, implemented. I mean, making the UI more things I have or, or less things to store in my inventory, the happier I am since I, I do like to keep you know all the toys in there but uh so yeah i think we're all in agreement here byler needs to, to put those in the uis i mean from what i've heard that's how past mmos have implemented it as well yeah uh, i mean not to go to... back to it but world of warcraft had an entire well later on so i mean we are talking what like six years in ignitia something to that effect they, they came up with a, a raid uh, system that allowed you to throw these it was almost like they gave you eight of them in a raid frame and you were able to pick them out with your cursor and put them on in front of the boss so you could say this is where i want you during this portion this is where i want you this portion but they gave you eight to use and you were able to sort of uh put your put your characters around and, and show them to dance before they even got started and, and just to explain dance, I'm talking about, you know, like the mechanics of a fight for anybody who doesn't understand that lingo. I call it a dance. you got to learn the dance in PvE. But what I'm saying is these markers allowed you to put them out there uh, to show people where they needed to be uh, in real time. And I think that that's very important for pugging and even for high-end guilds who want their people to do exactly the right thing. Uh, it's also a lot easier to call so many things out. I mean, especially from a raid leading and even a tanking perspective, uh, you get to see so much of the fight uh, that you can actually be able to say, I want you to go to purple or green or red or blue. And that there will be that little floating marker with a little color and you could be able to see it and move to that area and uh, be able to still progress with that fight in a very very more controlled environment it's up to the raid leaders and the people who are organizing their group to figure out how the fights work and be able to pass that information to their raiders and this is an essential tool i believe to be part of that kit 
You heard him, Bioware. Think Bioware. Correct it. Well, what do you guys? I know you one credit will, a piece. We'll make it up. <laughs> what else? Yeah, I think you guys are right. I, I think it should be part of the UI. So come on, Bioware. We we have faith in you. And Look him in the eyes. Right. Look right into the camera and tell him, Bioware. We know you can Bioware, do the right please, thing. Bioware, please, man. <laughs> Free up my inventory. Bioware <laughs> credits. No, no real money. Just give it to us. Oh, that was dirty. Let's move on. Let's let that sink in. <laughs> Let's not let that sink in. Let's move it on. <laughs> Anything else, Reddit? Well, the, the, uh, I think yeah, that, that was the biggest story, I think, uh, the most controversial story on Reddit. But another thing, I, reason why I think we should have faith in Bioware, because they've listened, they've uh, finally listened to us on something we've all been crying about, and uh, that is freeing up unused character names. It's, it's slated for uh, November 12th. Hopefully they hold to it, but they're going to allow anyone who, uh, or any character that has a uh, level 30 and hasn't been logged in in, uh, I believe, six months, is going to have their name uh, available. Uh, you know, part of the pool where people can take it. If you're a subscriber, I was, you don't need to worry about it at all. Yeah, I was so the first. I was in the first wave. I mean, let's give you some background. I was in the first wave, and I love Lando Calrissian. So I said, "What well, kind of sounds like Lando?" And I'm like, "Lando," you know, R "Rando," and then I came up with Rondo. I didn't realize he was an NBA player at the time. And I didn't realize anything about that, and I got trolled a lot. But Rondo always stuck with me. And then I got moved around, and this little level 15-year-old, not 15-year-old, level twerp took my name. Okay, and I've had to change names back and forth. I think I was Bowflex, I'm now Zack Ryder. But there will be a return of Rondo. All right, the second coming is upon us. All right, I'm just going to throw that out there, and it will be bad. <laughs> I'd have to agree with you on that. You lost oh, name. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, the reason why I am called Ignitia is based off the spawn of what my actual name used to be, which was Ignite. And uh, I've been using rolling around with that name for 10 years, ever since Counter-Strike and World of Warcraft and everything. And uh, coming in to find out there's like a little level 5 that has the same name. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. Well, shortly after that's coming out, we actually have Double XP Weekend coming out. So, well, really quick, any, I actually uh, want to—I will actually want to say something. Anybody who lost a name, you mourn that name more than, well, just a lot because obviously there's better things than than the name of your character. Go ahead and put it down on Reddit and tell us how you feel about it. I want to know the best names that were lost uh, to to the original. Uh, change so i don't care if it was uh from butt liquor to uh leia's shoe what name did you lose and how did it make you feel <laughs> all right we could we could move on <laughs> well i was just saying double xp weekends coming up but i think i know what tune i'm rolling next i'm rolling leia's shoe you know leia's <laughs> shoe <laughs> <laughs> oh no you're leia's left shoe Okay, I'll be Leia's right shoe. Okay. And and that he and Ignitia could be parachute, para Leia shoes. Nah, I was thinking about actually going with uh, Leia's left bun. Oh, no, Leia's buns. <laughs> buns. Okay, there you Leia's go. Leia's buns. Okay, cool. It just we just went lowbrow comedy. Okay, we just went lowbrow comedy. <laughs> That's a first. Well, that's no, not a first. For us. That's definitely not worse. a first for us, and it won't be the last. So uh, I know me personally. I've uh, on the imperial side. I've leveled up uh, one of each actually uh, alternate class as well. I'm a bit of an altaholic here, except for my marauder. So I, I think with double XP weekend coming up, I'm gonna have to try and get my marauder at least, to, if not to 55, maybe at least to the 30s and 40s. That What's way the I date on that again? A little taste in PvP. Uh, that is coming out on November 27th. November 27th. You know what it's going to have to finally be for me? It's something I... I it's eluded me. It's the, the godforsaken sniper or operative buff. I think it's going to... I think it's finally time. I think he's sitting at like 34 too. Can you even get it at 34? Like if I finished my missions, I could probably already have it, huh? 
you probably could. I mean, it's around level 40, but on my uh, my scoundrel, I was able to complete my class quest at level 45. I had to gear him out a little bit and then uh, put some accuracy mods in there for him. But it, uh, I'm sure it's doable. Uh, I think you should take that challenge. You think so? I think it's I think it's time. I, I cannot be asking for it anymore. Or I can't join. Okay. So all you PVPers out there, I'm sorry. Sometimes I join PVP matches just to get buffs, and then I leave. And and you, I know, hate mail. I know, hate mail. It's coming. <laughs> Please send them hate mail. <laughs> Don't do it. I will send you one personally myself. <laughs> Don't send me hate mail, okay? I wear PVE gear, all right? And uh, it, it's easy to kill me, so just find me on Oricon. Just don't send me hate mail. I don't read very well. Okay, look at me. Look at this. This is like caveman. You know? <laughs> but let's... <laughs> that you are. That you are. <laughs> but, uh, so... So what are you uh, getting there, Ignitia? But I know you have one of everything already, so are you just going to... I think Ignitia is going to finally go RP. And I think we've talked um... about it in past casts. Um... Yeah... Might check out Jung Ma, uh, the server. Uh, <laughs> heard there's interesting uh, things going on over there with a uh, all trooper guild and all kinds of weird stuff like that. Uh, but I don't know. I don't think I'll be RPing anytime soon. Yeah, uh, especially since Bioware still hasn't put out the chat bubbles. But oh, uh, he did it. I think uh, he did it. I think the next that's coming yeah, out in I the cartel that, market, uh, by the way. You didn't, you didn't hear? Oh, no. Okay. God. Misinformation. That was a joke. <laughs> that was mis... Don't even quote me on that one. <laughs> yeah, but I think what's next on the list for me is uh, either a gunslinger slash scoundrel and uh, just probably finishing up the rest of my uh, tunes from 50 to 55. So I have uh, one of every advanced class. Um, Sis side at 55. Cool. What's you what's what's been your favorite so far, uh, storyline wise? Just before we move on, I'm just wondering. The Imperial Agent, it's you know you, when you're playing the Imperial Agent, you just get that James Bond type of feel. You know you're running around, sneaking around, uh, especially with the stealth aspect of it. I think that's still got to be my my favorite storyline. I would have to agree with that. I think the Warrior one was also just maybe as good but i would have to say the worst one i ever had to deal with was the consular one from uh the republic side i think that story was just convoluted and worthless and just outright boring yeah i was actually quite fascinated i i did go a, a bit of a dark side in most of the choices but i think uh or on some of my early choices but i ended up going light side and i actually had a real blast that was uh it was actually a story that I just kept having to plow through. I was a bit curious on it, and it was just, you know, nice seeing a different aspect of the uh, the type of Jedi that's not a, you know, just a warrior. It's more of the uh, the diplomat as well as the, uh, you know, the warrior. So I don't know, that one was interesting for me. I, I space barred through all of it, every single one of my tunes. I don't even know what's going on in this game right now. I don't. Maybe okay. I'm just a bigger Star Wars nerd than you guys. Yeah, well, no, I'm a nerd. Like, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I think no, I've gone not. back. How dare you? You're not. How dare you, sir? Yes. This is Star Wars, man. It's all about the story, sir. There wasn't enough lightsabers, so I had to move on. But, talking in, uh... Not my fault that you picked up Bounty Hunter. Alright, so, anyways, moving uh, move on. Is, is anything else in Reddit, or should we move on to our Season 1 being held back? I did have a decent post on uh, on the Reddit site actually asking what the most major economic events were for the past uh, in the past five months. I mean, there had, in my personal opinion, I haven't seen really any major credit sinks. I've actually been seeing more income coming in overall. Uh, what do you think, Big? Oh, there's definitely a lot more credit sinks. The, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, the faction or the um, the reputation gear vendors have some cool things at max level. The, uh, uh, um, what's the uh, the moon from the last expansion? The uh, Zerka the, the Zerka planet. 
has the uh, DHK customization going for a million and the uh, the mount going for a million. And of course, I've had to get a on those a few alts. So, um, you know, I think there's oh, big um, some deal. critics. Seeing, big so. deal. Why, why don't you get it on my alts? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I know uh, rating, you know, progression rating can definitely be a credit sink as well. Um, I'd have to say, though, the biggest, um, I think, revenue generator had to have been when they released uh, the ability to craft the 72 gear, you know, opening those up for the cyber techs and the uh, the archerfice um, to be able to make the relics and, uh, you know, be able to make enhancements. The uh, I know personally I made uh, quite a deal of money off of it from the, uh, you know, just selling the... Uh, the, the armorings and the mods. I mean, you, you know, you buy the materials and uh, and then sell them for at cost, and you have a chance of critting on it and getting a free million. And the relics were going at least on our server, the Bastion. They were going for around uh, around two million or so. Yeah. So I think that's definitely made some line some people's pockets there. Well, I mean, even what yeah, about even hope. credit sinks to get into? I'm gonna say one of the coolest one came out with the uh, the bounty hunter stuff that was going on the event, and that was the HK skin. I don't know if anybody's seen this. I'll, in post, I'll put up a picture of it. But that HK-51 skin looks amazing. Oh, it does. Oh, I yeah. Shortly after I got the max rep for that one, I switched from the, the Zerka HK skin to, to that one. And that's the one my my uh, my operative's rolling with. Yeah, there's some yeah, fun, what, there's what some fun little sinks at the moment that I think, you know, put put my credit down every now and then. Yeah, what I was trying to say for the actual credit sink was uh, the biggest one I noticed that was like overtly huge was the actual in the bounty hunter pack was uh, the uh, Treak, uh, Treak, the new companion, uh, which you had to spend a million just to get the the contract for it. But other than that, everything else when it came to yeah, there it cost credits a million credits for you know the zerka speeder and all that stuff was um not too bad because you were actually having to farm a daily just to be able to uh get the rep up so you were making money on top of that there's been more money coming in from the fact that there's multiple dailies and they're actually on they're better and different compared to the other ones yeah so I mean, I would say that uh, if you have the money, there's something to spend on in Star Wars The Old Republic. <laughs> so uh, it's there. Just go look. And uh, I'm sure somebody has a guide up on, on, on where to buy the cool stuff at. Uh, moving on. Uh, I think that that's it for Reddit uh, of the week. There was a lot of stuff Reddit this week, huh? You know, I, I love the site. Yeah, it yeah. keeps you up to date. keeps you up to date, like, on how people really feel about the game. So uh, that's why we touch bases on the on the stuff that goes on there. And it allows us to get good information and uh, skip the trolls on the actual uh, community forums. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been surprised on how well behaved the, the people on that site are. I mean, even just with our podcast, the amount of good quality feedback we've gotten. Thank you to everybody, by the way, who's been involved in, in that. I feel, you know, you guys are just as much a part as this as we are. So, uh, but let's move on. Enough of the sappy stuff. That's not me. I actually hate all of you, is the truth. I'm just <laughs> hey, I, sorry. I, hate I felt too, too girly. Let me fan myself for a second, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but let's move on. Uh, we've got a kick in the pants today. I mean, not today, but this week. And I want to know what you guys, how you guys feel about it. Um, season one of PP, PPP, PP, PP, season one of PP was held back. <laughs> Lowbrow again. Anyways, <laughs> season one of PVP was held back and, um, Eric Musco released this. Um, yesterday, actually, was it, it, was it really yesterday? It feels like it was so long ago, you know, in a, in a time, in a place far, far away, you know, but, uh, like around 1.2, but <clears throat> you're right. We won't go there, but here it is. Hey, everyone, this isn't me talking. This is me, uh, verbating what was said. Okay. That's what we in the news field do. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but Hey, everyone, the last time we talked about season one, we said that it was targeted to begin on Tuesday, October 29th. I love that wording. It was targeted. You know, 
You, you shouldn't have expected it anyways, because it was just a target. And not all darts hit the, hit the target. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're going to be delaying the start of Season 1. Big surprise, huh, Big? <laughs> I know that this is a absolute. I know that this is the absolute last thing any PvP player will want to hear, but we have good reasons. We have discovered that there is a major issue with how ratings are being awarded in ranked match matches currently. This bug can cause some very serious rating in, inflation to happen. Basically, if we start season one with this bug in place, it could become near impossible for teams who get a late start to catch up. Okay, yeah, so there's I, a bug. I understand. I wouldn't just say there's a bug. It's more like also um, ranked PvP groups actually playing the game of trading off and actually increasing their rank as high as they can with more wins and better gear and all that good stuff. But no, I'm not going to say anything. I mean, I think there's more to talk about, though, on, on this um, than just the bug that they're talking about, really. Because ranked would just be server wide at that point right it, it, the yeah, way that it's set up right now just server wide yeah ranked is server wide and frankly it needs to be expanded it actually should be set to uh either all servers or or if you want to enhance a battle group if you want to call it that uh but other than that Frankly, all they, all people do in ranked right now is they queue up, they get a, a group that's that they're cool with or something like that, and they'll queue up and they'll actually just trade wins. And well, yeah, that's been going on for a while, what, yeah. They're yeah, but I mean, I've seen you know groups with like 22, 2400 rank, uh, rating because of how much uh, how much these guys uh, actually trade off a little bit, and then. Uh, then they go out on their own because they have the best gear and they're completely fully optimized compared to everybody else. But I don't think like well, I, let's talk be. about just the issue too. Even is why is it being held back? You know, not not with the repercussions of it being uh, of of what's going on at the moment. Like, what do you think, uh, Big? It's it is there more here than just the bug they're talking about? Do you think? Possibly, I mean, depending on when they want it, I think they said it's going to be still mid-November when they possibly do it out. So there, there could be a few other bugs that are behind the scenes that, you know, they just don't want to bore us with the details. I mean, I think, you know, the whole point of it is going to be for the rankings since they're coming out with the uh, the PvP web-based letterboards as well. Um, you, you know, so everything's going to be tied around ranked, and I don't think they want... Um, you know, like they said, the first teams to be able to, to come late to it and be able to catch up. So, you know, we waited, what, two years almost for, for ranked. I think we can wait two or three more weeks, hopefully. I don't know, man. I don't. <laughs> two years is, is enough time for people to just not come back, though. You know, and, and this could, I hate to say it, they're like the last straw-ish, maybe. It could be. I mean, I was on sitting on a, a server called the Fat Man for a good minute there, and that server uh, that I know of on the Republic side was PvP all day, every day, any any time there was PvP going on. That that's that server rarely raided ever. Uh, and what I've noticed is the more they wait for season one, the more it dwindles down. There's not as many people wanting to PvP as much as it used to be. I mean, frankly, it's to the point where I don't even really care about it because I've been waiting for so long. Well, there are plenty of people. I mean, when I queue up on the uh, the Ashen server, I get uh, for for solo ranked at least my queues pop about every five minutes. So, you know, there there are uh, people actually sitting there trying to rank. I mean, we when our guild, we've uh, pulled a few teams together and got stomped you know doing the uh, the group rank matches so you, you know the, the teams that are queuing up are definitely some some good teams out there you know they have their coordinations down they have their their team set up and make up um, so i mean if there is you know a bit of that uh the, the trading yeah i don't think it's going to be too prevalent maybe you know on the pve servers but uh, the ppp servers are, are definitely getting some um you know they still seem to be pretty pretty active even late nights i'm still getting uh, queues fairly fairly active should should the PvPers be scared though with the wording? I mean, basically he said, let's just to read verbatim here. He said we said that it was targeted 
to begin on Tuesday, October 29th. Okay, now if you go down to the third uh, uh, paragraph, which I haven't even gotten to yet, he straight up says the team's new target date is November 12th. Now, let me reiterate that uh, he said target date again. So we don't have a definitive date. No, but that's hopefully we, uh, you know, I, I, I would just like them to surprise us with it and say, hey, guess what? Ranked coming out this week, you know, um, that way it just doesn't get everyone's hopes up, you know. Um, either way, I'll, I'll, it's going to give me a little bit more time to kind of practice in the, in the rank, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, uh, and uh, so I'm going to have to think that the other teams you know, are going to feel the same way about that, you know, looking at Reddit. Uh, you know, the comments there, people are, are mixed about that. There's some people that are angry. There's some people that, that you know, that don't care uh, one way or the other. There's just people that are, you know, bit like me, a bit disappointed, but... You know, we'll we'll get over it, I think, and especially when it comes out, I think it's going to be worth it. You think it. with the amount of PvP trolls out there that they're going to wait this one out without sounding the the PvP gong of war on e on Bioware? Oh no, I definitely think there will be some vocal people, but uh, I don't think you know the the good ranked teams are going to rage quit and then sub over it. I mean, let's just look down. I mean, there's uh, Bziki, B-Z-Z-I-K-I, which is one, is one of the first ones. He's a, He asks, is, uh, is someone surprised? You know, and, that's, and, and so it seems like that's like the general, like, let's keep going down. Um, hell no. He, this is in response to, is anybody surprised? <laughs> hell no. It's been, what, almost two years? Still find it amusing it was advertised on the PvP PvP page in game for over a year. You know, so I think I think we're starting to to find a, a comment. Like I I'm definitely on Bioware's side. What we've gotten is great from this game so far. But what they've promised and not come out with is disappointing, I think. And it's it's disappointing for two people right now. PvE side we always knew this was going to be a PVE-based game, right? Uh, but now they're coming out and they're doing good with the PvP. We've got arenas, and I think people are what? They're taking this pretty good. I mean, the, the, people are starting to, to come to terms with it. Um, but it seems like we've had two things that have been really promised to us, and we, we always talk about it as a funny like joke, but uh, I, I swear to you, we're going to start referring to ranked pvp season one and um chat bubbles as these as basically what the chupacabra is to us or or the yeti you know that's just true uh, no i i gotta give i Fire saw it the other day for... it was season one season one i tracked him down i grabbed him <laughs> by the tail and i stuck my thumb up no sorry i'm not gonna i'm not gonna borrow that from south park but you know it, it's like <laughs> Well, I do have some footage of the uh, the ranked PvP season season one. Unfortunately, it's a little grainy and, and hard to see in only about five ten seconds. So, no. Uh, the thing is, is I have to give Bioware credit. They have done a very phenomenal job in the past. Just to go over things, I mean, in the past two years, they have put out more content faster, and it's actually relatively decent content to the what people wanted. Uh, the length of say PVE and PVP, bringing in arenas, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, even pre yeah, it's preseason, but you're still getting rank. I mean, that's a good thing in itself. the The thing is, is if you actually look at it compared to like, and I I also hate to say this, but I mean, compare it to what the biggest MMO on the market is, World of Warcraft. It took them forever to have ranked arenas it took them forever to actually just do arenas in general and their content when they put it out is very very slow it takes them almost a year to put out a patch and these guys do it almost every two to three months yeah i mean we're getting what new Frankly, new arenas am... already what the, the mckeb arena yeah. right how, how long yeah, have how, how long uh, have they been running the same arenas in in world of warcraft uh the, let's put it like this they've been running the same arenas for almost uh, four, four, five years, and now they're finally actually putting out two new arenas. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, WoW or Blizzard has always said arenas was the biggest mistake they ever made. 
one of the biggest mistakes they've ever made. So at least at least we're getting it done correctly, and and, and at least you have a group that's standing by it um, with this PvP. I mean, wouldn't wouldn't you think big? I mean, it does seem like they're at least hey, if you're gonna go in, you might as well stick your head all the way in the hole, right? Oh yeah, definitely. And that's why I think they had to hold back on the eight v eights. I, I just think, you know, there was a lot of complaints. It was just taking t- for too long to queue. Um, you know, they, they did disappoint some people with that, but I think they really made a lot more people happy with the uh, the four v fours. So, and like I said, they they are fun to, to hop into, even uh, the non ranked ones. Um, you know, make for some fun, interesting matches. <laughs> um, you know, once people get the uh, the hang of it and and don't leave their group and charge in by themselves and, and get raped, you know, or, you know, get murdered. Yeah. So, I mean, let's, let's, uh, I think what we've come to terms with is give it some time. We do have ranked just because you're not the top of season one. It sucks. It's just like the Yeti and the Chupacabra. There's people who, uh, see it. And when it turns, it, it could turn like a human. If you get that joke, good good for you it, it's because people take videos of the yeti and they're, you know sometimes they're not always uh the best <laughs> but anyways what i'm saying is keep your eyes open we'll see it sooner or later right oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah and uh i might actually be able to swim with a lock ass monster at the same time i'm just saying <laughs> if he doesn't bite your leg off but, <laughs> but uh you swim you just look like somebody who never learned how to swim. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm just being I, mean. I live in California for crazy. I live in California, man. What do you expect? Everybody here knows how to swim. That's true. Well, relatively. We, swim, we surf, you know. <laughs> so before we move on to the next to- uh, topic, uh, let's go ahead and talk about our week in the Star Wars: The Old Republic. How about you, Big? Uh, what was your week like in Star Wars: The Old Republic? Oh, it was uh, get my rep up for the uh, the new Oricon faction. You know, I like to to get all those reps up there to get the cool items. Um, like I was saying, getting into some uh, some more ranked PvP, um, doing more of the solo just so I can get the uh, the hang of it. You know, get uh, the composition, get the feel for each of the arenas. And uh, you know, in our guild, we've been uh, trying to get down the dread dread fortress in hard mode. Which we've had a uh, good progression on. We made it to the very last boss, and uh, like always, I'm making uh, lots of money on the GTN. How dare you, <laughs> Ignitia? Didn't spend much time this weekend, uh, so I just I, I hate to ask you uh, because I don't I don't think you did much. And so he he has been programming all week. So, uh, what was your week like when you did log in to Star Wars? <laughs> Other than uh, probably visually seeing code every two seconds, uh, uh, working with my uh, C sharp projects. Uh, no, uh, other than, it's been uh, pretty fun as of late. Just knocking out some dailies, doing a little bit of random world PvP. Oh yeah. Um, not remembering which raid we were actually going to, and actually flying to Oricon to find out that we were actually doing old content. That was quite interesting. Um, but other than that, yeah, my week was short, but I got to, uh, try out some of the new cartel packs and see what, uh, goodies that they have to offer, and, uh, so far I'm impressed, like, uh, almost every series that they put, other than it's probably burning a hole in my wallet, I'm just <laughs> say that. So, me, Raging Rondo's week, I, uh, caught the tail end of progression, and, uh, so because of me, we're doing really good. Um, I'd like to say that first and foremost, because, um, well, that's just how it is. Big misses me. He's not, he's not quite the healer when I'm not around. So, uh, (laughs) uh, he has to work harder when you're here. That's true. So, uh, one thing that I have been doing and I have been enjoying it is I have been doing my McKeb dailies and it's not because I enjoy going out there and doing dailies. Not at all. I could, can stand dailies, but one of the great things that I've found is that there is world, uh, I think Ignitia said it the, the best uh, the other night, and he said, uh, uh, update 2.4, world PvP is alive and well, you know, here it is, uh, I have been downing people 
and having fun ganking uh, lower geared people than myself. Yes, sometimes it happens. Uh, on McKeb. And uh, I've been having a blast you doing Oricon. it. Did I say McKeb? I'm sorry. On Oricon. So, and this kind of leads us into our next topic uh, world PvP versus organized PvP. And I've kind of. I kind of come up with something that I uh, that I, I'm hoping to nail in the point. So let me get my uh, let me clear my throat and 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 get ready for my performance. Okay, so just give me one second. Right, brace for it. Brace for it. It's a lonely night. You just got done with raiding. You're separated from your group. And you come across some mad Jedi. Ignatius sleeping, but it's okay. <laughs> Over the horizon, you see a group of red what? names coming over, coming your way, and you know that you're going to die. So you get, you run. You know you saw some green lettering or oh, just right over the soldier. You know there's friendly forces that way who can help you out. So you turn tail, but they're on you quicker than you could ever know. They're attacking you with everything you have. But you're healing yourself. You keep running forward, popping everything you have, trying to get there. And lo and behold, the green names come from nowhere. And they're jumping on your targets. They're nailing them down. You heal yourself to full, and you enter the fray. Seconds later, you stand victorious with your enemies, begging you to not kill them. And you know, after you end it, you have won. But they might... They might just revive themselves there, or they may be calling back up. Then you know you're involved in world PvP. Oh, hey, cool story, bro. <laughs> no, so this brings us to our point. World PvP versus organized PvP. Where... Uh, where is the heart of the PvP now? Like, what? what is the... Um, Where's the bet? Where's it at? Like, where's where's the best PVP happening? Is it involved when you take eight people and you queue them together and you say, "Here you go, have fun," or is it when you you're out on a, a, a lone world trying to get your dailies done and you're able to block people from doing their dailies and kind of get them all flustered inside, you know? And you can always tell because they can say to you, "I think I call, I was called a virgin the other day because I was killing people." I thought that was pretty funny. You know, so. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, where's P where are the PVPs at? It's Orcon. Uh, all honesty, uh, world PVP, uh, especially for uh, like the server to Bastion, which is strictly a PVP server. PVP has been a non-existent for almost two years. I mean, they world PVP, make, right? They made sure. Uh, correct. Uh, world PvP has been practically non-existent because the planets are so segregated. Or, and then in like segments, like say like uh, for an eleveling experience, when it comes to like terrace, okay, the Republic does it when they're like at level eight, level eighteen, and then the set do it later on, and it's two different instant style planets. Uh, it's kind of like didn't make any sense whatsoever to have an actual PvP server and have it so segregated. And finally, finally, you put a planet that, first off, has the raid on it, which it makes it even better because people will go there. It is not going to be an abandoned planet. You're not going to see it like, oh, this stuff is like whatever. We'll never be here again. Nah, this place is going to be populated. People need to do their, want to do the raids. They need to do the raids. And they also want to do their dailies, which is fantastic. And on top of it, that they made it uh, to the point where you had to cross each other? Oh, mm -hmm. oh my God. It's it's every PvPer's wet dream is to actually... It's every PvEer's right dream. I'm sorry. Uh, you don't have to be a PvPer to enjoy... Look at that guy over there. He's attacking way more than he can handle. Watch this. I'm going to throw a rail shot at him. It's real funny. <laughs> you know, everybody oh, yeah. can get into this. Well, I'm, 
yeah, the this has definitely brought I think more uh, open world PvP, but there's definitely been um, a lot of world PvP. I mean, with McKeb, you know, opening up that it had a lot of cross faction go to, uh, spots to go in there with the uh, the new Zerka planet. I mean, that was basically one area where you're sticking in two, you know, both factions in a close quarter area. That was closed um, to in mean, too, and it wasn't even very large. He, <laughs> no, it wasn't. So that that forced them good. I mean, even Tatooine, that at least on our server, the Bastion, that seems to be popping almost, almost nightly for some good open world uh, PvP. You know, you get a few uh, few members of one faction trying to storm the base, and then it you know gets a, a few more 55s out there to counteract. And I've had some some good epic battles. I've I've even been jumped on Tatooine doing the uh, the seeker droid missions out there. Um, one was actually quite amusing. It was a couple 55s and. Uh, it must have been about 10, 15, like level uh, 30s through 45, and they were trying to take me and my HK droid on, and, and it got to the point where, you know, I was just, you know, dropping an orbital strike, you know, killing half their members, and uh, they finally got smart and lured me to an edge and pulled me and knocked me off the edge, but, you know, it almost made me felt like a, a world boss, you know, where it had these... Uh, these 20, <laughs> did you, did you feel to like a boss? That's so awesome. I, did. I, I would felt sit like there. a world boss. I would make up my own mechanics. Like, I would run around in circles <laughs> every now and then. <laughs> like, why is the boss running around in circles? Because he is. Shut up. <laughs> and, like, take out his HK droid. He's out again. <laughs> <laughs> every time the HK droid comes out, attack it. You know? No. <laughs> like, you know, he's he's starting to, he's starting to cast his orbital. Get it. <laughs> like, stop him from casting it. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I think uh, Oricon's made it for the the uh, the people who don't have the time to go out and seek open world PvP. I think it's they've made it a lot more accessible. You know, that's what I'd have to agree with 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 Oricon. It's it's made it a lot easier. Um, and like you said, with the raid being out there, you're you're having to get out there, and of course, it, you know, to get out there quickly to unlock the speeder, you have to have gone through your dailies as well too. So that's just forcing the PvPers, um, you know, who want to go have some fun ganking people to to meet up with the PvEers who are trying to do their dailies to to either you know get some credits or to to get unlock the uh, the speeder access to the raid. Yeah, uh, uh, the the thing is, is when it comes to like world PvP. In in this in the situation where uh, you have like Tatooine, it's occasionally you get those 55s, but mainly you're ganking low bees, which, uh, in all honesty, yeah, gank a low bee here and there, it's fun, you know, but it's ganking a low bee. They have no chance of really killing you. Occasionally you get that 55 out there, but like Oricon, it's almost to the point where everybody's on equal plane. They're all 50, it's a 55 only, so everybody's hit their level cap. There's and if in order to do some of this stuff out here, you have to have some sort of decent gear. And on top of it, the dailies give you uh, high level 66 gear, which is fantastic. And it just brings out the best in it. And honestly, when it comes to organized versus world PvP, world PvP is what it's supposed to be. Especially if you're on a PvP server. whoop de do for organized PvP. If you wanted to really do organized PvP, oh. good for you. I hear you, but I think organized has its place. When you're... And, and I know this is different than what I say a long time, but I guess I have to play the devil's advocate here. Because, I, I mean, from what I... It's good to have world PvP. But when you're looking for the for two eight man groups that can come together, I think Big made the point uh, a while back was that world PvP is fun, but he doesn't feel like it takes as much skill because when you're doing that, it's usually like eight on one or eight on three, and that's cool when the three people are killing the eight people, or when you're one guy taking on. <laughs> 30 little level 30s like that's that's funny we as we talk you could be your own little raid boss you know but um when you're looking for eight on eight or four on four and testing yourself against an equal team or what should hopefully be an equal team then that's where organized pvp um is important when you're looking at and, and i and i say this uh many people would disagree with me when you're looking at 
just going out and where it happens is where it happens. And we've had this conversation before. I, I don't even wear PvP gear. Because I don't want to be ready for it. It's and, and people are like, well, you're crazy, you know, because you can, uh, you can have, if you don't have PvP gear, they're going to wear PvP gear, and then they're going to kill you faster. And they make very valid points when they say that. What I'm saying is that I don't want to be ready for it. There's something about going out, doing your dailies, and that's why even tattooing, you're kind of ready for it. I like dailies on Oricon because I don't have to be ready for it. I'm in my PvE gear. It's like I'm just out and about and some gangsters roll up on me, you know, and they got baseball bats. And I'm like, screw you, I got a gun. And I'm going to, you know, this wouldn't happen in real life because I would just cry and run. But I'm just, <laughs> yeah, I can live my fantasies out in a video game. That's why I play video games. Leave me alone. <laughs> I mean, what do you what do you think, Big? I mean, because I I think there there's a place for both. If you want to live out your fantasies well, of taking out gangsters with your with your nine, uh, you know, your forty forty five, your three fifty seven, pa 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 pa, you know, because they only got baseball bats. That's cool, but but where where do they both have their place? This guy. Hey, hey, this hey. guy. I admit I it. I would usually ready. cry. Uh -huh. Okay, so just leave me alone. <laughs> Oh, I'm always ready. I, I do my uh, my PvE dailies in, uh, in my PvE gear all the time. I'm just, uh, you know, I, every so often if I, I see someone, I'll, I'll maybe, uh, you know, we're sitting there staring at each other. I'll go and, uh, you know, we'll go and fight. But I don't too, go too often to go out of my way to gank people. But if people are going to try and gank me, then I'm going to make them sorry. Oh, if you know, it's, it's red, not it's too dead. Hard to do these... <laughs> no. <laughs> don't PvP. I mean, don't PvE with me. Because I'm going to start something. <laughs> Okay, I've been doing it since oh, Nightmare Pilgrim. <laughs> I've been doing it since Nightmare Pilgrim. You know, I've been 2011. Here, so, <laughs> you know, I've been I've been uh, repping my skills since NP. <laughs> oh yeah, I've done my fair share of ganking as well. But you know, when I'm on my doing my dailies, I'm usually there to tend to I get my max rep up. So you know, I'm there for one purpose to get my dailies done so you know i'm not going to go out of my way to gank people but you know like you said on oricon there's plenty of people good looking out there to try and gank me so i like to have my pvp gear on to you know to and if they don't have it then they're going to die quickly and if they do then it ends up for some good matches do you keep it colored i know that's like a weird name do you keep it like match colors if, if i was wearing my pvp gear because it i would make it like these are the things i took off my enemies when i killed them they don't all look oh, yeah. the same. You know? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> they're not all the same. They're like, who am I channeling right now? Like, what's what's his name? Like, uh, oh, man, I'm trying to think. Any actor out there who, oh, the, that Batman guy, you know. My Batman <laughs> suit is different because I took one off the Joker and I took the tie off Two-Face. <laughs> is it a helicopter i think i spend too much time trying to, to get my gear the way i look my uh my every set i i have generally has you know it goes part of my look so yeah i, I use the, the match to color quite often you know there's a piece or two that i'll generally either dye a different color or match to color and then un uncheck that certain piece but yeah i'll i'll even uh when i have to get to the heat of battle and switch to my pvp gear real quick i, I make sure i hit that match to color because you know, looking bitter just helps you kill better. Looking bitter? <laughs> looking better helps you. No, no, no. I, I like the first one. I look bitter all the time. I'm going to just mean mug the camera for a while. Is that mean mug or am Dude, I, I flirting? I almost feel like I'm flirting with the camera. Oh, you on the internet I think airwaves. you're flirting. <laughs> the sad thing is only guys would listen to us too, you know? <laughs> like, we don't have the hot guy, you know? We're we're just some PvPers in, in PvEers. <laughs> like, we got Scruffy McGee over here and pointing at Big. You know, I got... I'm surrounded by Scruffies. <laughs> we're all a bunch of bears right here. Like, uh, hibernated. I woke up to to do Dread Fortress and kill people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, just wake up in the middle of the night and uh, set up, sit in front of my computer, and all I'm going to do is just act like I'm a complete Jedi. Times I wake up and uh, 
my wife's sitting there and she's like, man, you were crazy last night. I'm like, yeah, I was that good. She's like, no, you were snoring your head off. You freaking bear. So, I mean, it, like we're surrounded by bears, but I mean, we acted out, out of, uh, out of there too. <laughs> so Oricon PVP, it's alive and well. Uh, but I just found out that I've actually been hanging out on the wrong planets because on Tatooine, you said, where else is the, is all the, the world PVP going on big? Uh, Tatooine, uh, the, like I said, the Zerka, um, the Zerka planet and then the, um, McKeb, McKeb's died off as well that, you know, when the expansion came out, that was pretty active, but I'd say, uh, Probably Alderaan and, and Tatooine for the lower planets where some good PvP generally happens. But, okay, because that's what I'm saying. Like, you have to get ready for that, though, right? Because, like, if you go on Tatooine, you could fight anybody. Is it anybody who's not in your guild? Is that how it works? Well, th there's the, um, on Tatooine, you're talking about the, uh, the, the Smuggler's Den as well. Yeah. Um... Or the Outlaw's Den, sorry. That, that's, yeah, that's the kind of the open faction. I mean, that, that does create some interesting fights there. But like I said, a lot, of the, a lot of the fights that happen on Tatooine are, you know, as you're going about doing your dailies, you'll get, get ganked by a couple of people. Or, you know, the opposite faction will go stand out besides the, uh, you know, outside the main base and, and take out the, the guards and, you know, the low levels. So they'll, they'll generally call in reinforcements to, uh, you know, to come help push the, uh, the other faction out of their base. Cool. Well, uh, anybody else have anything to talk about? We're, I mean, so so where are we at? We're so like I said, we we we've agreed that they they ha kind of have their place, right? I know Ignitia says it's alive and well only in world, um, but I think that there's the other side that says if you want to put your skills up against somebody who also wants to put their skills to the test, then the place for that is organized. But if you want to go out and not be ready for it. It could happen at any time, which I think is is where a lot of the really good PvP happens is when you're least expecting it, when you have to hit that cooldown. Yeah, I agree. I'd say the most memorable and the most fun times I've had, uh, uh, you know, I do have some good fun times in War Zones, but yeah, the most fun I've had, I think, is open world PvP when those unexpected battles just happen to break out or, you know, maybe you went to go look for it and then a couple more guys hopped in and you had a nice even match and, you know, fought each other for a good five, ten minutes and, and you know, it wasn't just a, a gank fest. And, and then open PvP can definitely have some, for some fun memorable times. So Bioware. Keep us integrated. We don't want to be separated. Um, maybe even give us a place right in the middle of our daily area where if Ignitia pisses me off, I could send him in, drop group, and beat the hell out of him. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm look at me. I'm begging. Ignitia pisses me off a lot. And I can't reach through the headset and beat him up, but I could try really hard to like get him over the internet airwaves. I'm a try hard. Well, then you can both you know. quick travels to the uh, the outlaws den and, and handle it there. That's true. Your fists, fist a cuff time. <laughs> Put them dukes up, boy. Put them dukes up. <laughs> That's real PvP. <laughs> All right. And you piss me off too, Rook. I know. Our it's, it's fabulous good. Host, the raging rondo <laughs> the raging rondo anyways um so just got to go over a few just uh house stuff really quick and this is going to be changed in post i'm going to put it towards the front that we didn't go over it uh just to introduce ourselves since we are on week five uh we're only missing one of our hosts tonight it was just a weird night that we were doing this but um i'm raging rondo i play a mercenary so as you can tell i don't pvp much on my mercenary so i also have a uh, power tech and an assassin that i do most of my a majority of my pvping on um i do do world pvp do do i do do world pvp on my mercenary but it, it's do do pretty much is what i'm trying to say lowbrow comedy again today how many times do we got to hit lowbrow comedy i'm telling you all the time all night all anyway time. like i said i'm a mercenary I uh, am, I have raided with some of the best. I have uh, not PvP'd with some of the best, as you can tell by my ranking. But uh, I've been doing 
MMOs. For, I've been playing MMOs for a, for a long time, about 10 years now. Uh, Big, tell us a little bit about yourself, man, before we end, uh, end the night. Well, Old Republic was actually my first uh, MMORPG, so it, you know it's been a fun ride. I've definitely learned a lot. Um, you know, started off as a PvPer in this game until our uh, PvP guild died, and then server transfers happened, and and joined up with you guys to start doing PVE as well. Um, you know, I like to to play the uh, the GTN market. You know, rack up my uh, hundreds of millions of credits so I can buy all the the cool stuff. Um, yes, sir. You know, reputation. I. Uh, you know, just love getting it up as well. I like the cool toys that you can pick up off those. So, well, um, we're keeping it PG. My, my Oricon rep. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I like to uh, to keep my uh, you know get my rep up. I'm trying to get the Oricon rep up as well, so I can have the, the rest of mine. And my uh, my main I play is on my operative healer, um, who I use for both PvP and PVE. Nice, Ignitia. Tell us a little bit about yourself, buddy. What is there to tell? Um, He's a man of little words. I started out. <laughs> He's in the of tree. Course, that's all we need to know. Yeah. Um, very, very soft-spoken. Uh, I started playing uh, MMOs way back when uh, with uh, One Wild came out, but uh, really don't care about those guys anymore because they pretty much killed their own game. I'm just going to straight up say it. Uh, but uh, I started off as, uh, as a juggernaut tank and moved on to uh, when the server started well in this case dying and they did the mergers I went to uh, the fat man server and did a, a, a sentinel for a good minute and switched over to this server where I'm a marauder and now I'm a sork and frankly I'm having fun with being a sorcerer it's been fun healing and trying to do uh, lightning DPS and trying with all attempts to keep up with these overpowered uh, mercenaries and uh, snipers. Oh right my! Now, compared to my. Oh, class. how dare you! He did it. He couldn't let it go. Couldn't let it go. I can't let it go. I couldn't let it go. And I'm all right. So sir is just still being crapped on, and I'm just. Saying. What server did you uh, ex transfer again from uh, Ignitia? Hey, there's just a question for you. Bonder Crystal, the Fat Man, and uh, Prophecy of the Five. All right, just to finish up some of this stuff for our, dun, 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 our, uh, our, uh, what are they called? Sponsor. <laughs> Anyways, so this is an Ultra Saber from ultrasabers.com. I'm going to go ahead and put the website down just in case you want to go look at it. Even if you're not buying there, it's so cool to look at. Uh, I have the Manticore. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off so you guys can get a cool look of it. This is probably one of my prized possessions that I own. I'm going to try to find it for you. Bring it across. Why am I not saying? Okay, here we are. <laughs> this is funny. So this right here is the Manticore. This is one of the... Uh, lightsabers that you can get uh, it I have with orange I'm not sure it comes through orange but oh yeah it does actually uh, it is just a gorgeous piece of machine or any any Star Wars uh, man uh, or woman out there would love this uh, so you can just go to the website check them out I just want to show you one thing that's really cool about them just give me one moment They are completely, take. you can take them apart. Check this out. I'm holding the hilt right now. One of the cooler things about this is I can take these apart, hold the same pieces, and, and they have hilts for sale. So just like any good Sith or Jedi out there, you can make your own lightsaber. That is so cool. They got multiple colors. Check them out. Just, just click on the link. Tell them you heard from us. All right, tell them that we're doing our job. Anyways, uh, anything else you guys got to say tonight? No, uh, other than uh, thanks to the sponsors, uh, Ultra Sabers does make an amazing product. I just spent a boatload of money on getting my sabers, and they will be here soon. Uh, I can't wait to show those off. Um, uh, at the same time, have fun, keep PvPing, keep keep on raiding, and uh, you know, hit us up and. 
we're on the bastion and on circle of and uh 42 gaming.com yep hey have a great week and for i would say happy raiding but we did a pvp night so that probably what brought a lot of you guys uh in so happy pvp and if you do decide to go in and check out dread fortress remember we're probably further along than you have a great week <laughs> i'm just kidding have a great week guys and uh we really appreciate yeah, it later.